In this brief video, we will examine the key facts of inguinal hernia to arm you, arm you with all the knowledge you need should this situation arise. An inguinal hernia is a lump that appears in the groin, as you see over here in this area. Uh, typically, it starts off as a painless lump and over time it can cause dragging sensation uh, and pain. Uh, in the beginning, at least, the hernia reduces, which means that it can go back inside. If you are not sure, the thing to do is to visit your primary care physician or your GP and let them examine you. Uh, once they have examined you, they will come to an agreement with you about what to do next. Sometimes the diagnosis is not so sure, and in that case, the your general practitioner or primary care physician may ask for an ultrasound examination. An ultrasound examination basically is a scan when, while you're lying down on the table. It's not painful, it's not invasive, and a probe is placed where the hernia is, and that is connected to a machine or a, a screen on which uh, the outcome from that probe uh, can be seen. It is quite a reliable way of diagnosing this. Very rarely other modality of imaging are used such as an MRI scan or rarely a herniogram which is a contrast x-ray of the area. What if it's not really painful? Do you really need to have an operation? Well the simple answer is no. If it's not really painful then you may not need an operation straight away. It's only if it's painful or it causes you other symptoms uh, as mentioned before, draining sensation, discomfort, etc., that an operation should be considered. Sometimes the hernia can be incarcerated. What does that mean, incarcerated? It comes out and it gets bigger and it just won't go back in and it is quite painful. It is painful and you can actually feel the pain. And if that situation arises, then you're best going to the hospital as soon as. Sometimes the, the patient may have more symptoms, abdominal pain, uh, vomiting, redness, and the pain is quite severe and there could be changes in the skin. That might mean strangulation uh, and that is an emergency and you're best going and seeking urgent surgical help. That is very important. Okay, so you've been referred to a surgeon, what to expect. So the surgeon would wish to know uh, about your history, about your general state of health, about what medication you're taking and so on. You'll also examine you in detail to ascertain the diagnosis. And once that is done, between the two you have two choices. Either to go for an operation, depending on your symptoms, or observation. If you do not wish an operation right now, or if it's not causing you too many symptoms, or if it's your life situation, or if you're not fit for an operation, then between the two you may choose an operation. For, as far as the operation is concerned, there are uh, two main varieties, uh, the open versus the keyhole. The open operation, let's assume that this is the belly, this is the rib cage, this is the right side, this is the left side, and this is the crease of the groin, and this is the hernia that you have over here. In an open operation, an incision is made right on top of the hernia, and then you dissect down to the hernia, push it back, and then repair. In a keyhole operation, uh, you would make an incision around the belly button, and get inside, fill your tummy with gas, put a camera in, and then put two ports on either side, and then approach the hernia from the inside. Now, in a keyhole operation, in a keyhole operation, uh, you would always put a mesh. In an open operation, you have the choice of a mesh versus no mesh. Uh, but that said, though, the great majority of the operations are performed with a mesh safely and the mesh now has now been around for about three decades with us uh, with very good outcomes. Okay, so now let's look at some pictures to try and better understand the situation anatomically. Here is a picture of a groin in a man 
uh, the skin has been opened, the subcutaneous tissue has been incised, the muscle overlying the hernia has also been divided and this is the hernia uh, which has been pushed back over here. This is the sac, this is the spermatic cord that takes the blood vessels and the duct into towards the testicle. Uh, so that is the general anatomy. Over here you can see the same area but now a mesh has been placed so so this area over here this is the mesh which now covers the whole of the area and the defect to give it strength this just shows how the mesh sort of wraps itself around the spermatic cord and once the mesh has been put in the muscle layer shown over here is now closed over okay so what complications can arise from the repair of a hernia just looking at the open repair first so the obvious one bruising and bleeding and that can end up uh, with a bit of a bruise around the, the site. Sometimes there's frank bleeding and very rarely patient may need to go back to the theatre uh, uh, to the OR for an operation. Uh, infection is quite rare uh, in less than uh, two to three percent so three out of a hundred if that uh, Recurrence is variable, but with the modern repair in hernia, using a mesh, it should really be uh, less than five out of a hundred, uh, and some series would suggest it's around one to two percent. The one dreaded complication is chronic pain, and there are several theories why that should happen, uh, but that is a dreaded complication. In general, it improves at six months, but in a small a minority of patients may go on for longer than that. Now, the quoted figure is around 10%, so one in 10 uh, patient may end up having chronic pain after a groin hernia repair. And in a small number, this can be quite incapacitating. Now, there are some, there are three nerves around here in this picture, not shown, uh, and these are at risk of injury during the operation that can then give rise to the nerve type of pain almost immediately after the operation which is one of the causes of chronic pain. Uh, equally if these nerves are injured then there might be a small patch of numbness uh, which is troublesome but not incapacitating. Uh, now the blood supply to the testicle as I pointed out it runs in this area such as over here and it goes down in the testicle if for whatever reason this is interrupted or damaged during the operation then the testicle can be painful it's called ischemic ischemic orchitis again it's a rare condition uh, initially the testicle may get bigger but then within a few weeks uh, the testicle shrinks. So let's just say that if that's the, the initial size uh, it might just become quite painful, a bit swollen initially and then it finally sort of uh, atrophies and gets quite small in size. Uh, in, in men there is a risk of urinary retention uh, which is a bother but not really something to get too worried about. Uh, and it usually resolves itself, but sometimes a catheter is required. So these are uh, the common ones that a patient should be warned about. So there's one small caveat to keyhole operation. Because this operation is performed from the inside, there is a 1 in 1000, which is a very rare complication of a major injury to a blood vessel, uh, which may cause bleeding or rarely to one of the organs inside, such as the bladder or the bowel. Uh, and that is something again that surgeons will warn you, about, warn you about but this isn't something that should hold you back this is in general the keyhole uh, approach is very safe uh, and indeed these complications are exceedingly rare so what to expect after you have had your operation so in most um, hospitals around the world this is a day case procedure meaning you can go home the same day if you meet certain discharge criteria and these include being able to have had a wee, being mobile, being able to tolerate a diet and being able to look after yourself and be self-caring. 
So in general, if you meet these general criteria, you'll be allowed on the same day with some painkillers, uh, some and some other tablets such as those to control your nausea as well as to regulate your bowel. You'll be given advice about wound care, not to allow water uh, around the, the wound area, when to take the dressing off and not to take a bath at least uh, in the first few days after your operation. So uh, once, once all of that is done uh, and you're home, uh, what about activity and so on, return to work. You should not lift anything heavy for two weeks. Uh, and if you have a manual heavy physical job, you may extend that from between two to four weeks. Desk job is really up to you. You may find that you're able to go back to work earlier than that, especially if you're self-employed. What about driving? Uh, each country will have its own guidance on driving and return to driving after operations. You should follow that. But if you can safely manipulate a car uh, without too much discomfort and you're not taking any medication, that causes drowsiness or um, impair your ability to make a, a safety stop, uh, then you should be able to return to driving earlier. Although our doctors or um, your general, general practitioners, primary care physicians may be able to advise you on that as well. Uh, that is in general about the hernia and if you suffer with the condition and looking for treatment, then I would strongly advise not to worry overly worry it's a common uh, it's a common condition and the uh, procedures are performed safely around the world with very good results uh, good luck